Okay, I'll now turn to our first panel of, to, of today's event, uh, which will be a McGill graduate panel. It's entitled Digital Cultural Translation, Migrations and Chronologies. And um, our first panelist is going to be Ms. Kate Bundy, who will, whose, title, whose title will be SOS 404, Transcreation Plus Digital Obsolescence. Uh, before I turn to Kate, I'd like to speak briefly about um, the structure. So panel presentations are strictly less than 10 minutes. At nine minutes, I will give a thumbs up uh, emoji to signal a one minute left. And at 10 minutes, I will give an applause emoji to signal the end of the presentation. Without further ado, I'll go ahead and turn over to Ms. Kate Bundy, who again is a doctoral candidate in Hispanic Studies and Digital Humanities at McGill University. Hi there. Okay, let me make sure I have my uh, screen share set up since I'm transitioning quickly here. Okay, so let me get that up there. Can everybody see that? Okay, great. We've got my notes up and I'll start my timer. <laughs> All right, good morning, everybody. Thank you so much, Cecily, for the introduction. And um, as one of the organizers of today's colloquium, I'm really grateful for the opportunity to present with my colleagues at McGill and to be a part of this uh, amazing experience today. And really, my presentation today is an observation that feeds into why we are all gathered here today, which is to appreciate Augusto de Campos's poems that have been translated or transcreated into a format that is now viewable, readable, and enjoyable in the current web space that we're in today. So I don't really think that this sort of phenomenon is new at all. And in fact, it's a material and poetic problem that is at the core of avant-garde poetics. Except for now, in this point of history, we're talking about the post-flash era. So as many of you know, after January 30th, uh, 2020, clips and artworks that had been reliant on flash plugins may now feature instead that HTTP error code of 404. That code means that this object does not exist anymore on the World Wide Web. I'm sure a few of you can relate to this meme that I have here of searching and getting that error message. It can sometimes be like a slap in the face. <laughs> And it seems like such a cold hearted epitaph for what once was there. After years of seeing this error message online, this 404 code has become a sort of obituary for digital obsolescence. So today I'm going to be talking about how that 404 error message relates to one of Augusto de Campos's poems that has its own transcreation story several times over. So SOS or SOLS is a visual and kinetic e-poem and flash compatible video clip that is a transcreation of a print version of SOS from 1983. True to the tenets of Brazilian concretismo, SOS from 2000 is a verbi vocal visual e-poem. So that means it's composed of movement, verbiage and sound that are structurally and thematically interrelated and poetically inseparable. SOS has two video clip versions with text and sound in either English or Portuguese. The material story of SOS as a clip poem exemplifies how generations of electronic literature require maintenance, preservation, translation, and transcreation to remain visible to future readers and audiences. Originally, Campos's clip poemas were accessible through a CD-ROM attached to a book, uh, in a book collection titled Now from 2003 and henceforth made available to the open web with a flash media plugin. As a work of second generation e-literature, SOS as a flash based clip poema surfaced in the early 2000s during a pivotal era of technological panic revolving around programming bugs and technological obsolescence. Some of you may remember this, it's Y2K. So nearly 20 years after Y2K, the digital fabric that created the existence of SOS online is in crisis. Adobe's Flash Player is now blocked from running Flash content, and now a significant number of e-literature works are facing either disappearance or undergoing a reincarnation or transcreation process through alternate open standards like HTML5 or some other methods that we'll hear about later today from Dr. Uh, Gregor's keynote. So I quickly want to describe SOS as a clip poema since some of us here may have not had an opportunity to experience it firsthand. So against a black background, yellow words form a circular pattern that rotates slowly around a central axis labeled SOS in a galaxy-like motion. 
tightly interlinked, the sound movement and verbiage of SOS are both unified and in tension with the other. While the form of the clip poema evokes a spiraling galaxy with a symmetrical and harmonic order, the verbiage in SOS expresses existential worry, disconnection, emptiness, disorder. The voice that narrates in the video clip recites the words in a linear fashion from the most inner to outer circle, albeit with vocal distortions like echoes and dissonance, creating a sense of dilution, confusion, and conflict. With each outer layer, the words become shorter and further apart, appearing like an expansion that, if contracted, could only collapse back to the core of it all, SOS. So I'll briefly read the poem. Souls, silent, voiceless shall we roam, in the night that goes night, sunless, motherless, fatherless, what shall we do thereafter? Dust alone, I, ego, eo, ar, ich, yo, je, yo. While the three letters SOS could refer to the expression asos in Portuguese, which means alone, another interpretation of sols is the Morse code for SOS or save our ship to signal a vessel in distress. The reader or the user is not forced to choose a meaning based on language affiliation, as de Campos often plays with translations and constructions of words across contexts. So as a central axis of a galaxy in motion, the word sols is an expression of loneliness, as well as a coded cry for help, and vice versa. In the universe of sols as a verbi vocal visual e-poem, methodical deconstruction and spiral-like movement and existential crisis read in the verbiage and enunciated through distorted sound are polemics held in suspension by gravity and yet are able to contract and collapse in oneness. So SOS is clearly a poem that evokes space, time, existence, individuality, harmony, chaos, and codes that are universally understood yet diversified. So that's when things get curious in this very particular moment that is in between digital obsolescence and transcreation. So in the post-flash era, SOS as a clip poem is in crisis as it's no longer viewable or readable as it was created. And for the moment only exists as a low quality thumbnail without animation. One would think that this would be a time of nothingness, but it's not, actually something stands in its place. So when the user clicks on the thumbnail for SOS on agustodecampos.com, the HTTP code 404 page not found message appears like you see in this image here. Interestingly enough, the error message dialogues very closely with SOS as an illustrated image of an astronaut that's floating away untethered from their spaceship. The astronaut reminds the reader or user in a speech bubble, parece que esa página fue pro espazo which means it seems like this page went to space. Albeit temporary, the flash exploration of Campus's SOS Online is momentary transcreated into a new visual poem, communicating the loss and disconnection of code and expression. 404 in this case is the new SOS, lost and alone in the void of digital obsolescence, but not for long. SOS is an example of electronic literature that's being ushered from the second generation into the third generation through collaborative efforts to program, curate, and preserve digital works of art and literature for updated platforms across devices. The next iteration of Augusto de Campos's flash-based works has been restored into HTML5 with his permission by Adriano Ferrari of the aria.co collective in Brazil. Three of his works will be newly available as of today, in fact, at this colloquium. So I conclude this presentation by expressing my hope about the cycles of technologies, artworks, and opportunities to create and transcreate. I especially thank those who are here today and maybe those who are not here today, acting as revivalists, translators, programmers, curators, and communicators for the past, present, and futures ahead of us. Thank you so much. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Kate, uh, for that compelling, um, uh, the, the compelling sort of deep dive into thinking about obsolescence and thinking about digital art. Um, I look forward to, um, to addressing some of those questions in our Q&A.